And here we are at Inkling Stadium, ready to watch another wonderful splat... fest? Well, that works too. <laughs> watch nothing, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish there was a spectator mode in this game. <sighs> that would be cool. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on, if you can't tell, Splatoon. <laughs> And this is our thoughts on Splatoon multiplayer. This is one of those surprise hits that comes out of nowhere. Though if you were paying attention as Nintendo was roving up to release it, you're like, yeah, this thing's gonna be a hit. Though it was the biggest surprise is Japan likes a shooter. Because it's filled with cute characters and zany stuff and bright colors. <laughs> What's almost as surprising as Japan liking a shooter is me liking a shooter. I do not play shooters. <laughs> when I first saw the trailers for this game, I was like, yeah, whatever. Played the first global test fire. I was like, meh. Second global test fire. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played both of those. No, actually, I think I only had a chance to play the first one. The timing on the second one was a little off for me. I think by the time the second one came out, you already had the game. Oh, yeah. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I pre-ordered it on my Wii U through the eShop. So mm -hmm. the day it came out, actually the day before it came out, I got the download, and then the day it came out, it unlocked. And I was going, oh my god, this game is so good. And you're like, I don't know. And then you played the global test fire, and you're like, yeah, I'm getting the game. <laughs> uh, the multiplayer in this game is addictive. Sometimes even when it's like, god damn my team! <laughs> Yes, you could be on the worst losing streak, and you're still playing. Mm-hmm. Unless you're in ranked battle going, God dang it! <laughs> Especially for me, I'm like, Oh, I'm finally B+. Plus. Lose three battles in a row. God damn it, I'm at B again! <laughs> oh, please. I just barely made B-. minus. One loss will probably send me back down to C+. <laughs> And as we may have mentioned somewhere, then there's the Splatfests. Those are wonderful. The music's great. And uh, just in case this might be a minor spoiler for people who haven't played it yet, Splatfests have wonderful things going on. <laughs> yes, it's the one time where it's actually equally fun to play the game or just sit in the lobby. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Kelly and Marie. I'm a big fan of Kelly. I think Kelly has better animations, but I'm more of a fan of Marie. Mm hmm. Though, Lilo reminds me of the fact that Marie's favorite weapon is the Splat Roller. No, wait. No, it's flipped. It's the Splat Roller for Kelly and the Sniper for Marie. Because Marie's always talking about how she likes to get up in high places and shoot people from afar, basically. Yeah. And Kelly's more of close quarters. I got the Splat Roller! Which was like my first favorite weapon when I really got used to the game. It's like, ooh, this thing's like a tank. You just keep rolling, just keep rolling. <laughs> yeah, I I used a roller for a while, and then I switched over to uh, shooters. Not sniper rifles, though. I'm not comfortable with the handling on those. <laughs> Probably just need to spend more time in the weapons test area. Though good for strategy for using a roller is avoid conflict at all possible, and just roll wherever there's ink that's not your color or a blank area. Basically, just avoid combat, ink as much territory as possible, don't stop unless you have to recharge. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which was probably one of the reasons I liked the roller a lot in the beginning. But then I got more into having fun with combat and taking opponents out, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, miss, I killed them with sprinklers. Hey, that is a valid strategy. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how that works. <laughs> like they do so little damage. <laughs> yes, but you see, I also managed that earlier on, so they were probably lower level opponents whose gear wasn't fully unlocked yet. <laughs> also, they were clueless. They didn't even notice the sprinkler was hitting them. Otherwise, they would have moved. <laughs> oh, but I gotta say, my favorite current weapons, yes, that's plural, is... The Splatling, any version of it currently, especially that new long-range version. Whew, that's going to get you from across the map. The Buckets, those are nice. This is more like favorite classes of weapons, I should say. The Sloshers, 
And then this next one is a particular favorite weapon. It's this golden rapid fire one. I can't remember the name of it, but it shoots really fast and it's golden in color. And I find it works really well for covering a lot of territory and taking out your opponents. <laughs> Lux spends a lot more time playing around with the weapons than I do. I was very fond of my Inzap 89, which had my glorious sprinkler sub weapon and ink zuka for territory covering. But that thing uses ink up so quickly, so most of the time now I use my custom Spattershot Jr., which um, my sub and special are more uh, support based. So depending on the type of team I end up with, that's either really good or really bad. <laughs> that reminds me, I almost never use my sub weapon. <laughs> Though, speaking of specials, I like the roller combined with the Kraken. Because you can go from rolling right into Kraken and back into rolling. <laughs> you almost never stop moving when you have those two combined. Because, especially with the right shirt, shoes, and other bonuses, your tank and special will fill at such a rate that by the time you're out of your tank, your special is full, then you go right into the Kraken, and that automatically refills your tank. So after you go back to normal, you're rolling again, and by the time your tank's out, your special's full again. So... <laughs> mm -hmm. I've run from a few people like that. Because your job as a roller is to keep moving. <laughs> and now onto some technical stuff with the splat fests. Me and her have been really paying attention to like the, not really the math, specific math, but how the numbers kind of get tweaked over time. And especially how certain things, like it's actually bad to be on a popular team. Because from what we can figure, you actually fight in less counting battles. Because you end up fighting your own team a lot. And the people who are on the less popular team are constantly fighting battles, so they have a higher chance of winning more battles that count. And since it's the winning battle percentage that gets the multiplier, even if you have an overwhelming popularity, the team who has the most wins is pretty much always guaranteed to win it, even if they had an itty-bitty popularity. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't always the case, because they've been changing the numbers over time to make things more balanced, but I think they overbalanced recently with that 6x multiplier on the winning. Yeah, because I remember it being 4. Oh, it was, it was 4 on both for a while, and then it was 4 on one, and then it was 4 on the other. I think at the beginning, they didn't have a multiplier at all, which I think is actually the most balanced for my taste. And I think multiplier should only be applied if there's a tie, where it's like basically 50% right down the middle. Because then they can apply the multiplier, and that will break the um, tie. And it's just, it's just really interesting. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Though on the last Splatfest, Pokemon Red versus Pokemon Blue, the blue team would have won no matter a multiplayer or not. They would have still had a higher total score. But that one was nice because there was only a 10% difference between the popularity. Lux and I were on different teams. We're usually on different teams. Well, the last three times we have been. But um, near the beginning, we were on the same team all the time. <laughs> I think like twice. I'm pretty sure it was three times. And then they started doing these other ones. And then we're like, why are we always choosing opposite teams? Because they're mostly on ones we like. We don't care which side that, w that we're on. So we're going to go with our favorite ink sis Inkling sister. <laughs> yeah, because for me with red versus blue, it's like, okay... Same starters, same story, same glitches. A few exclusive Pokemon is the difference. Why is this our Pokemon anniversary battle? I would have much preferred, okay, Gen 1 versus Gen 2 Pokemon? Battle it out between different legendaries? Like, okay, do you like the bird legendaries or do you like the dog legendaries? Heck, Mew versus Mewtwo, that would have been awesome. <laughs> Oh, I gotta say, one of my favorite Splatfests was the Transformers one. <laughs> Autobots versus Decepticons. I wish we could have kept the shirts on that one. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have my game yet at that time. It was on order, but I didn't have it yet. Because <laughs> it was sold out locally, so I was ordering it online. And then there was Science versus Art. And I'm like, they can't exist without each other, so... <laughs> yeah, which was my first Splatfest... There's also been those wonderful battles where you're like, we won by 0.01%. <laughs> yes. 
I love those battles where it's so ridiculously close. I mean, point-wise, it's great to overwhelm the other team. But, you know, there's that certain tension when you're really just fighting it out to the last second. And you're looking at the map going, did we? Didn't we? I can't tell. God damn it, someone got off an ink at the last second. Does that change anything? Does that change anything? Yay, we won by point one or point zero one or some crazy small number. You're like, yes. Or you look at it and go, no, just one. Just, ah. <laughs> <laughs> or you have those cringeworthy battles where at the end you're like, sorry, sorry, because you basically pinned them at their home base. And they come up with like 3%. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I feel particularly bad on those ones when you look at the final score and you see that they had a missing player. You're like, oh, okay, now I feel guilty. It was an uneven match, four versus three. Yeah, though I do love being on a three versus four match where, you know, I should say a four versus three match where you're the three and you still manage to hold out. You're like, we didn't win that. Bad. We didn't lose by that much. It was like 45 to 55. So, yay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that happened so much that they actually incorporated it in the update that they released where you could have private battles. So you could actually choose a three on four match. Yes. Uh, I currently don't have enough friends for private matches. Yeah, me and Herbin like trying to figure out, okay. I almost had a splat team, but they kind of got interested in other games. Damn them and their computers. <laughs> and variety of maps is really nice. And it was, I know people were annoyed at the beginning of how few maps there were, but I think it was nice to introduce them over time so that you didn't get bored with them all immediately. But now we have a really nice rotation and variety where different weapons have different levels of effectiveness depending on your play style and what type of team you get with. I'm not a big fan of the museum one. I like anchovy games, though. <laughs> I like the camp map. The oh, camp, camp triggerfish. Triggerfish, yeah. And I also like the new map that has the treadmills on it. <laughs> Piranha Pit. I mm -hmm. do like camp triggerfish because... I have noticed that most people don't walk along the wall, so I will go and set a sprinkler, and then I'll go climb up the wall, and I'll ink my way along the top of the wall, which counts for points, and also gets me out of range of everyone except the snipers. Though, now that you bring it up, uh, I'm trying to talk about how different our strategies are from each other. <laughs> <laughs> my strategy usually is... To get to the other side where the other people are as quickly as possible and start pinning them down to keep them from getting out of their base. <laughs> My strategy is basically CHARGE! <laughs> I think it's also where I usually go for the more aggressive weapons now, other than the defensive weapons. Like, a roller is definitely more of a defensive weapon compared to more rapidly firing weapons. Like the Splatling, can't remember the name of those particular, the golden gun one that I was talking about, and the sniper rifles. Mm-hmm. And I'm a little more of, okay, guys, you do realize that we do need to ink our own territory, right? I mean, I know you want to keep everyone from getting on our side, but if our side isn't inked at all, yeah. <laughs> so I tend to spend a little more time filling in the background and then catching up to everyone else or going, oh, look, they're all pinned by a sniper and the sniper's not paying any attention to me because I was clear back here. Circle around, tap, tap, goodbye. <laughs> I think it's also comes, I think my strategy comes from the fact that I played on a lot of teams where I was, where I was seeing that strategy used, specifically the strategy of is get to the other side as quickly as possible and pin down the team because if you can keep the other people from making any territory progress, no matter how little you've inked on your own side, you still win because you have more territory covered than them because they can't get out of their territory. <laughs> yes, but that also makes for a kind of a boring game. <laughs> well, it, like, it really depends on your play style because my play style, I enjoy doing that. I don't mind being pinned at the midway point, you know, and duking it out at those key strategic points. But just having someone pinned at the respawn point, like, really, we're corpse camping? <laughs> and um, then there's Judd, <laughs> the cat that has an interesting backstory, which we'll probably talk about in the next episode. <laughs> yes, because we're trying to avoid spoilers in this episode. 
But Jed is cool. He rewards you with money and gives you tips. And I love how the squid sisters talk about him. Sometimes like, oh my god, Jed fell out of a tree trying to get a coconut. Don't worry, he has built-in padding. Mm -hmm. Or his eyes glow in the dark. True story. <laughs> we might want to talk more about the squid sisters since they show up every time you boot up the game. As long as you're online, if you're not connected. Well, obviously, if you're not connected, you're playing the single player. <laughs> or the servers are down. Cough, cough. Connection error! No! <laughs> yeah. My favorite time to get a connection error is just right as it's trying to calculate the results. Connection error! No! Mm -hmm. So, yes, Kelly and Murray, the local idols, who also broadcast apparently the only TV show, which consists <laughs> entirely of telling us what stages we can go play. Mm -hmm. Or the next Splatfest is coming up. Go and vote! I love their conversations, especially the one for the Pokemon Splatfest. That was one of the more awesome ones. <laughs> Prepare for trouble. <laughs> All right, so we've talked maps, we've talked weapons. How about gear? Oh my god, gear at the shops? Why do they not have more clothes that look cool? Why don't they cycle it out quicker? <laughs> I think it's supposed to be every two hours you get new clothes, but every time I come in there, like, why hasn't the selection changed? It seems like it never changed. Because I'm like, I've bought all this stuff, or none of this stuff looks that cool. <laughs> why do I have to go outside and steal people's clothes to get stuff I want? <laughs> yes, probably half of my wardrobe has been courtesy of Spike's uh, finding ability. <laughs> And uh, some of my wardrobe is courtesy of Spike's finding ability just because I enjoy talking with him. And <laughs> since I don't buy that much stuff, I have plenty of money to waste. <laughs> In game, not real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both me and her are like looking at our coin count going, God, we don't buy anything. I also look at my sea snail count and go, God, I don't do anything with this. Why can't I buy the same clothes twice so I can have two sets of the same looking outfit with different stats? <laughs> I would really like to be able to do that. Because that would be nice. <laughs> I was like how you don't like any of the shopkeepers, but you love Spike. Spike is cool. I like his voice actor, and I like how he calls me love, so sue me. <laughs> oh, that suddenly reminds me of all the wonderful art you see in the lobby area. That is awesome. Yes, and it is the easiest access to yeah someone's post. I hate yaing people in my Me Plaza at home because I click on it and then I have to wait for it to load up Meverse and then I can yeah it. But this is so quick and easy. I love going through my plaza and seeing what people have drawn, what people are saying. The inappropriate content has been minimal. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I also love how the posts will also appear as graffiti on the walls everywhere, so you can actually look at the graffiti and yeah, those as well. Which is a nice touch. Though if you walk through your plaza, you realize like, oh yeah, the posts in here also is also the graffiti. Oh well! And some of those posts also show up as graffiti on your maps while you're playing. Mm-hmm. That would be neat if you could yeah posts by shooting at them. <laughs> Though they may accidentally get extra yeahs because you've accidentally shot them. <laughs> Mm-hmm, because sometimes I need to shoot the wall for strategic purposes, and we're not allowed to use our weapons in the plaza, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also a wonderful nice touches in the plaza, like if you go up to the Squid Sisters and look at them, they'll periodically turn to you and wave. But if you turn the camera away from them so the center of the camera's not pointing directly at them, they will just keep talking. But if you point the camera so you're looking, so the center of the camera is looking directly at them, they will periodically turn to you and wave. It's a really nice little touch. It is, and so is the way that a lot of the people are arrayed in the plaza. You have the ones who are dancing in front of the store. You have the people that you just battled with hanging outside of the battle dome. You have people on the benches. You have people walking around. A fun little trivia about the people dancing in front of the store, that's motion capture stuff. They captured several people at the on the Nintendo development team in Japan, and they did some motion capture of the one of the main directors and creators of the of Splatoon, and they realized he danced so bad, so they didn't include it. 
<laughs> he goes, yeah, I'm just just a terrible dancer that they get. Yeah, no. <laughs> Going back to the shopkeepers, one of my favorite shopkeepers is actually the girl with, who's an anemone, eh, an an god damn it. The anemone girl with the clownfish in her hair. Mm-hmm. I liked her because she's like, she's so shy, but the fish is like, come on, buy our stuff! <laughs> I also like the, um, shrimp. He says because he has all those legs. <laughs> also, he looks like he's fried shrimp, so. Which is a little creepy in a way. Just the whole art style of this game also screams 90s! Yes, but the nice thing is, since it's deliberately dated, I don't think it's going to end up feeling dated. Mm hmm Speaking of Inklings, me and her both chose the female Inkling. <laughs> Sorry, male inkling, you're just not a, that appealing to look at. <laughs> if he'd gotten a better hairstyle, maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, and I hope when they do release a Splatoon 2, I really hope they add more customization to the character, like different hairstyles for both sets of inklings. That would be nice. Also, I wish we had more designs, too, along with, you know, maybe more designs for different types of inklings, or the ability to, like adjust their proportions a little bit so we have taller inklings shorter inklings maybe play some other species that are in there like playing a spike would be kind of neat <laughs> mm -hmm. or playing as some of the jellyfish characters that are almost always watching us during our matches oh yeah and the other shopkeepers are a horseshoe crab and a jellyfish ah <laughs> oh, sheldon i'm so with callie on that Oh, we're going to have to ask Sheldon for the deets. I'm like, I don't want to... I, I never go into the weapon shop enough. So when I would go in, he'd tell me about like eight weapons at once and I would be just like holding down the A button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I've bought more weapons than you do. So. Yeah, I maybe own nine. Uh, and that reminds me of the special stats, you know, the modifiers or um, stats that you get on clothing. My favorite... I think has to be, I should say my, my favorites have to be refill faster, swim faster, and move faster. <laughs> Those are all nice. The main on my jacket is throw bombs further, which is really annoying, but I really <laughs> like my jacket. Um, but one of my favorites is actually the, abil the main ability on my shoes, bomb sniffer. I avoid so many traps because it will even show you when bombs have been thrown around corners. Mm -hmm. I also like, um, use less ink as you shoot. That's a very handy one with some of the weapons I use. Extremely handy with my Zap 89. God, that thing guzzles more juice than an SUV. I love the people who have spent a lot of time and a lot of sea snails to make it so all of their stats are exactly the same. <laughs> that takes a lot of work to go through the randomizer, but Judd advised that that's diminishing returns you get more use out of a variety of abilities, but if you can't get your main ability as what you want on the clothing you want, getting your secondaries doubled up makes sense to me. Well, in conclusion, we really love the multiplayer in Splatoon. All the variety, the different maps, the different weapons, the different strategies. Callie and Marie are awesome. Mm -hmm. Judd's awesome. Spike's awesome. I really like the shopkeepers. The ability to play with friends, the ability to play with strangers, the ability to pick this game up at almost any time of day and find someone online to play with. Also, yay that there is no actual voice chat because people are act like jerks enough without having to talk to them. <laughs> I'm talking to you people who dance after killing people. <laughs> I love it when they get spotted right where they're doing that. <laughs> And I always do a booyah after that happens. <laughs> Apparently, in conclusion, we both love this game! <laughs> Any final thoughts yourself? Uh, beyond that that's obvious, and we hope that we didn't bore you with all our fan girl slash boy squeeing. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts on Splatoon multiplayer. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below. Want to know more of what's going on? You can check Lux out on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Really like Lux's art? And would like some high quality versions or maybe some of your own? He is currently accepting commissions and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.